I wrote this out because I didn't want to forget anything and there's been so much and now she's got me crying. So hopefully we can make this through. Um, I want to say my name is Margaret Walker and I'm discovering my best life for the very first time. As far back as I can remember, I was big. I was the biggest in elementary school. I was the biggest in my high school and I was probably the biggest in college because um, I just kept growing and kept adding. I could not control my feelings about food. I was addicted to food and I never would miss a meal. I never missed a snack. I never missed an opportunity to consume. Proverbs 25, 28 says that a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. A city without walls would have no protection from intrusion, from destruction. I was trying to raise my family and I felt very defeated every day. I wanted to point out that, hey, I'm just a single mom. I'm trying to get things done, but secretly, deep down inside, I was a mess. I did try to put my best foot forward and create a life for my young family, but I could not get through this one thing. This one thing stopped me in my tracks and held me in a miserable place. I tried to overcompensate for my shame and my misgivings by going the extra mile in other ways, but I was left with a feeling of emptiness always. I was lacking deep in my soul and I could not find the answer on how to heal. I tried to lose weight and I did actually do that a few times. I was white knuckling through all of it, through the whole entire process and I felt a constant panic and exasperation. When the day was done, I could not go to sleep for thoughts of what was in the refrigerator or what I could get into because I could not rest until I gave myself something to go to sleep on. When I was not partaking in the extra food, I was mournful and I was bitter and hateful that I had to do this to myself because eating without limits helped me focus and it helped me be peaceful. Limiting my foods left me uptight and stressed. When I did partake in the extra food, I would lament and I was sad and mad at myself for giving in. I was a constant emotional mess deep down inside. I became so numb to life. I just ate all that I wanted and I stayed out of the public for the most part. My daughter was in marching band, both of them actually, doing amazing and they were beautiful and they were active and doing all the things. But they were having a Disney trip and so uh, my oldest daughter chose not to go. My youngest daughter said she wanted to go and we all had to go to the high school to see about the plans. On my way in the door at the high school, uh, I didn't get my foot lifted high enough and I caught the rug right inside the door and I went face first onto the concrete floor. Um, and there was just concrete. It was that and nothing else, the rug, the floor, and me. And I knew I had either broken or sprained my ribs. Just almost immediately I could tell something is definitely not right, but I didn't want, from the look on Kiki's face, a horror. I just wanted to get up out of this floor. This lady, about 45 years old, she comes running in. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, are you okay? here let me help you and no more than she said that and maybe her mom maybe about 65 70 came in right behind her don't touch her you're back you let her figure it out and they left me i would never have asked for her to help me i i, I would have figured out a way to get up on my own but kiki got to see that in front of me and I'm, I worked hard to put forth that I could take care of us. 
I worked hard to put forth that I was strong. And this was really not the way I wanted her to ever see me. I was crushed because I wanted to be solid for my girls. The situation not only forced me to look at my complete lack of capabilities, but also showed my daughter just how incapable I had become. So of course, this led me to more eating and more hiding and more depression. This time though, I added to it fear. Fear that I could not protect myself or my girls from those moments. One day, I saw a fa Facebook page of a friend and she had lost a pretty good amount and she looked great. I reached out to her and she told me about this program. I listened with hope, but in the end, I decided not to invest in myself and just let that go. For four months, I still struggled greatly. I didn't have any answers. I thought I was at the end. And mom suggested, in my tears, mom suggested, why don't you call that friend of yours and see about doing the program, just maybe for a little while and see how it works. I said to her, I've never invested in myself. And that was true. And what happens if I invest and then it doesn't work. And she took my hand and I love that she did this and said, Margaret, what if it does? So long story short, I did call my friend and started the program and it did work and it continues to work. It works well. And right now I'm down 158 pounds and I'm feeling young again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling young again and I feel a lot of energy and I'm getting my mobility back. I can bend my knees. I can sit down on the floor and get right back up without furniture to hold on to. Um, I'm dancing, I'm hiking. But the biggest thing that has happened for me is that my mindset has shifted. I don't feel like I've been deprived of anything. I don't feel like my life is sad and pitiful and that I'm the butt of every joke. I, I'm not looking forward to a day when I can go back to those unhealthy foods. I'm so happy that I love the healthy food and I love the fact that in exchange for giving up living through food, I get to live and experience real life for maybe the first time. There are amazing folks that stepped in with my newfound freedoms, encouraged me with words and actions and made me see that I am valid in my journey. Others dropped back from my life and started doubting the changes and watched cautiously for the other shoe to fall. Unfortunately, I was one of the others. I was watching too. I lived in a panic thinking each week that it was a fluke and this could not be real and that it would soon be over. But every week there was some change for the better. It is not all about the weight. This is what I learned. It's really about health. I held my breath for a few months and then I started to loosen my grip on that old way of thinking and I let it go. I had to decide whose team I was on. Do I love me and want to succeed or am I embarrassed by my lot in life and want to continue to hide? I decided very quickly that I loved me. I love the way that my life has been changing and I am all in, beyond all in. The crazy thing is that when I made that choice for the first time ever, I felt freedom. I felt true joy. I suddenly was very okay with being me and being right where I was in life. I felt energized about the things that I could do for myself instead of feeling drained that I had no control in life. What an incredible feeling to love yourself. This was just so foreign to me on every level.
But here I was starting this journey with the true passion to win. There is nothing, no feeling like this in the entire world. The last 13 months have taught me many lessons about myself and it's forced me to take ownership for my actions and do things with intention. I can no longer hide behind an ambiguous smile and play dumb about my situation. Some lessons were bigger than others. I just wanna share a few. Lesson number one, it's okay to not be amazing. It's okay to just be okay. I fought my whole life to try and outshine in one way or another to make up for my shortcomings with my food addictions. I needed to be accepted. I needed to be held in high regard. I needed to be irreplaceable to somebody, anybody. I realized in learning to love myself and learning to help myself, I am enough. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I realized that I was being strengthened. I was and am growing spiritually and emotionally and physically. And I was still being tested, but now, finally, in some things, I was winning small little battles. I had a coach, uh, lesson number two, Drive your stake in the ground. I had a coach who challenged me to step out of my, on my weight loss. She wanted me to post a side by side. I didn't want anyone to know until I was much further along in my journey. I wanted to keep things under wrap until I was sure that things were not were gonna work out. She took my before and after picture of me only a few months on program and she put them together and she sent it to me and she said, you just hang on to that and you post it when you're ready. Well, that was never going to happen. <laughs> I have coworkers on my page. I have friends. I have family that are accustomed to seeing me smile. I didn't want anyone to know that I was struggling with anything. I didn't want them to see a weakness in me. I finally challenged myself and realized that maybe what I was trying to hide or trying to stop is that I was not ready to make a commitment to my change. If it didn't happen, if I don't advertise it, then I don't have to accept that I failed. I would not, all I could do was say to myself, oh well, no biggie. I was hiding so that I could fall back with little repercussion and not lose face. <clears throat> but this challenge brought me to a crossroads and I had to jump in all the way or I had to jump ship. And to be honest, I was not sure for a couple of days which direction I was going to go because I'm very private. I mean, we take pride in being professional and it didn't seem very professional to me at all. Also, remember, I'm not so tough. I'm just new to loving me. And since all of those battles are happening silently, if I can keep them that way, then no one's going to know if I drop the whole thing and go back to status quo. But I did not. I decided that I was going to drive my stake in the ground, let my intentions be known, let my struggles be shown, let the love for myself be evident and let my failures be public. And not to boast or to capture attention, but rather to let God know that I am in appreciation of this second chance and that I'm not ashamed to be less than perfect. I am driven by the quest to intentionally shape my world, no longer desperate for leftovers. Lesson number three, Get out of your feelings. Relying on your feelings to know when you're hungry or what sounds good was something that I'd always done. I always used food to change my feelings. I would feel sadness and eat something and that would change my sadness to satisfaction for a short while. 
I lived through my emotions on so many levels. And when I let my life get out of control, I suffered depression and I fed that too. Program changed me, challenged me to stop using food to cope or feed my emotions. The food is just used for fuel, just like you would not fill your car and then pull it back through to the pump and try to fill it all over again because your car enjoyed it so much. I had to learn that I needed only specific foods and only specific amounts and only at specific times. And that is not a walk of shame. That was me being a good steward and taking great care of this amazing body that God has gifted to me. Stop, challenge, and choose. When I smell food, my salivary glands start to drip, and I am ready to put on the bed and get my grub going quickly. There's a panic that sets off in my brain and tells me to proceed to the dinner table. Stop, challenge, choose taught me to stop myself from panicking. Challenge myself in that moment and choose wisely. Do I really want to add this to my daily fuel? Do I really want those extra calories? Do I want to hold my progress up for just this one thing? Do I want to jeopardize my health over just this one thing? I started having intelligent conversations regarding my choices with myself. It is all my decision. I can choose yes, but I can choose no. That's more power than I've ever had in my whole life. I've been told always what to do. I've been ridiculed for not doing things. I've been pitied. I've been laughed at. But I have never, ever been given permission to make my own decisions. Pretty amazing. Pretty empowering. These lessons and many more came while I was steadily dropping weight. I've been transformed mentally, and I'm being transformed physically, and I'm so grateful to God for this opportunity, for this second chance, though the first time around, I was what you could call a non-starter. I'm also very grateful that he allowed me to come into this second chance with my doubts, and he gave me the time and patience to learn that I needed to change from the inside out, from the inside to completely change on the outside. I thank you all for listening to me today. And if there are any questions, I would love if you guys wanted to ask. Um, but I wanna finish by reading something that I wrote around 16 years ago when my girls were three and five. It's called Painting Outside of the Lines. Meredith and Madeline were riding in the car. The sun was falling and it was so beautiful to see. The sun was a rich burnt orange and huge as it lowered down in the sky. There were clouds of dark blue and gray all around that were being ignited by the rays of the sun. It was pretty spectacular and this is true. I remember Madeline I remember Madeline gasped at the clouds in the sky. And she said, look, Mom, God painted the sky again. And then Meredith chimed in and said, Mom, God did not stay in the lines. And I said, honey, you're right. God did not stay in the lines, but doesn't that look so nice? The plan of the master does not always look or feel like what we would expect or even what we think we may want. It may not fit in the lines of what we think of as good or right, but it is always the way that it should be if we are keeping the faith and walking with God. The path that he takes us on will not follow the lines made in the mind of man. God's path is greater than all and new in every saved soul. He is the sun burning hot through the sky, guiding the dark clouds in the formation that will best achieve 
his glory. Lord, I pray that when you are reaching to change my course and I feel the burning of your convictions, that I obey in an instant rather than trying to stay in the lines. Praise God. I hope you all take away from this that we should all be on a journey of discovering our best health and learning to live our best life. You may think you're stuck and on the way down. And for years, I felt that every day. It just takes one change to get things started. Any change can change your future. Challenge yourself to understand what things you can let go of. Also challenge yourself to understand what the reasoning may be for something that you feel you can't let go of. And then commit to yourself and you alone that you're gonna love yourself enough to make some big changes. Thank you all.